Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example is a little bit more complicated. And if you look at the parametric equations, you look at it and go, oh, I already know the answer. But let's go ahead and work through it to see how we would go from a function for x in terms of the variable t and a function of y in terms of variable t into a function of y in terms of x. Notice also I put this on the side here because we're going to need this identity. Now, if we're given the equation where x equals r times a cosine of t and y equals r times a sine of t, by now you probably realize, hey, that's the equation of a circle, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. But let's say you did, you did not know that and you had to figure it out. How would you do that? Well, what you could do is you go ahead and solve for t in terms of x using this equation right here. So the first thing we're going to do is say x equal r times the cosine of t, which means that the cosine of t is equal to x divided by r, which means that t is equal to the inverse, uh, let's see here, that would be the inverse cosine of x over r. I guess I did need this parentheses right here. So t equals the inverse cosine of x over r. And then we take that and plug that into the other equation, just like we saw in the previous video. So now we can write that y is equal to r times the sine of t, but instead of t, we're going to replace what t is equal to based upon what we found in the first equation. So y is equal to r times the sine of, instead of t, we're going to write the inverse cosine of x over r. And now you can see why I wrote that on the board. Now, how do you solve for the sine of the inverse cosine of a function or of an expression x over r? Here you can see that the sine of the inverse cosine of a is equal to the square root of 1 minus a squared. So let's go ahead and plug that in here. So y is equal to r. Instead of the sine of the inverse cosine, we're going to write the square root of 1 minus x over r quantity squared. So now we're going to solve for that. We're going to write this over a common denominator. So y is equal to r times the square root of r squared minus x squared over r squared. So here r squared over r squared is equal to 1. So 1 minus x squared over r squared. This is what we started with. We can now take that outside the, the radical right here. And r divided by the square root of r squared. Well, that cancels. So we get y equals the square root of r squared minus x squared. Now we square both sides, so we get y squared is equal to r squared minus x squared, and we move the minus x squared across, we get x squared plus y squared equals r squared, which is of course something we already knew, except we may not have known how to get to that point using this technique. So the technique is always the same. You solve for the variable in the parametric equation, solving for t in terms of the variable x, once we have that, we plug that into the other equation to eliminate the variable t, and now we have something that only expresses in terms of x and y, and that's the by now familiar equation of a circle of radius r with the center at the origin, and that's how it's done.